pity that India's growth story is being eclipsed even as we speak. Yes, with tongue firmly in cheek, India's gross domestic product, GDP, has been robbed of its sheen by a section of the Western media's gross dilatory propaganda. WM GDP, let's call it that. What's worrying is that this WM GDP is almost totally export-led and most of this industrial scale output is being consumed by the bucket loads by unsuspecting Indians. And at the risk of lodging the tongue a little deeper into the recesses of the cheek, it would have to be said that Indian consumers have come to believe that what they are consuming is real GDP as opposed to nominal GDP. If there was ever a case of invoking anti-dumping laws, this is it. The problem could have been happily ignored had the manufacturers not purported to be reputed brands in themselves. When these big names feed the narrative, people, especially Indians who still exalt all things foreign, believe their products to be kosher. And this is why several people, including predatory opposition politicians, latched onto a Guardian newspaper report that was rather illogically titled, Modi builds highways, but where are our jobs? As if the highways were the work of a legion of apparitions, ghosts. Or is the Guardian suggesting that even if they were being built by real humans, the job of building India was by itself not a fulfilling one? Sure, it's back-breaking work, but are we to assume that these toilers get no satisfaction in knowing that their labor is transforming the lives and livelihoods of their fellow citizens? Oh, what contempt this guardian of the working class has for the dignity of labor. This guardian newspaper article, or should we just brand it a pyramid of inverted piffle? moaned about how Modi's 10 years in office have left people poorer at the bottom of the social ladder and richer at the top. That there were no jobs to be had and where there were a few available, they weren't good ones. And as if to anticipate the arguments against the conclusions drawn in their piece, the authors implied that the economic data on India's burgeoning economic growth was dodgy, perhaps even doctored. It's no one's argument that the Modi government's economic record is beyond question. The Prime Minister is the first to say that there's a lot for him still to do. There's no arguing that there is inequity in Indian society and some of it is cruel and crushing. But disparity of the kind we witness in India today was evident a century ago in the United States where the Great Depression scorched the poorest of the poor. Look how far the Americans have come. And it was all because of decisive leadership, which, by the way, Modi exhibits and often is also criticized for. Yes, mistakes will be made by him. Perhaps the BJP will even be punished for them. But till now, a vast number of Indians still trust Modi to deliver on his promises. It's that trust that keeps the BJP ahead in the electoral race. And that trust has been earned, contrary to the GDP that the Western media dumps into India. Nevertheless, it's reassuring to note that at the very least, the champagne socialists of the Western media are more ambitious for Indians than Indians were for themselves a little over three decades ago. Then the Congress party with its anti-big business policies pushed millions of Indians into poverty. Of course, the Guardian newspaper forgot to tell you that the alternative to Modi in 2024, the Congress party and its ecosystem hasn't quite divested itself of its suspicion of big capital and its populistically contemplating frightfully wasteful schemes tried and thankfully rejected in the name of redistributing national wealth. If the Western media had any sense of fairness it would do its own brands and their credibility a big favor by acquainting itself with the facts. Talking of which, here are just over 30 headlines. 415 million Indians lifted out of multidimensional poverty in 15 years UNDP report. India's GDP to grow at a rate of 7.2% IMF. 
India's star performer contributing more than 16% of global growth, IMF. India's economic growth surges defying global challenges, Asian development outlook. India's 8% growth dream within reach through fiscal restraint, economist Barry Eichengreen. India's economy to grow at 8 to 8.3% in current fiscal, the PhD CCI. EPFO net October member additions at 1.53 million. Net new women EPFO subscribers addition rises to 28.69 lakh in FY23. 5.14 crore person years of employment every year has been generated since 2014 on an average. The Scock report. PMMY itself has added 2.52 crore steady and sustainable employment as an average per year since 2014. Net of employment mortality, Scock report. Out of 5.14 crore person years, the government has paid for 1.97 crore person years of fractional employment as an average per year since 2014. Again, Scock report. Employment generation totals to 25.2 crore credit-led employment and 19.7 crore person years of fractional employment every year since 2014. Again, Scock report. Per rupees 85,000 of credit under PMMY. One self-employment is generated. Scock report. PLI scheme report card. Production. Sales. Touch rupees 8.61 lakh crore over 6.78 lakh jobs created. Unemployment rate UR in urban areas decreased to 6.7% during January March 2024 for persons of age 15 years and above. PLFS data female UR decreased to 8.5% in January March 2024. PLFS data labor force participation rate in urban areas shows an increasing trend from 48.5% to 50. 0.2% during January March 2023 to January March 2024 respectively for persons of age 15 years and above again PLF data female labor force participation rate in urban areas rises to 25.6% during January March 2024 reflecting overall increasing trend in LFPR PLFS data Increasing trend in worker population ratio for persons of age 15 years and above from 45.2% in January March 2023 by 46.9% in January March 2024. PLFS data. Female worker population ratio in urban areas rises to 23.4% during January March 2024, reflecting overall increasing trend in WPR. PLFS data. A number of GST return filers up 65% to 11.3 million in five years. Finance Ministry net direct tax collection at rupees 10.64 trillion in April November 58.3% of PE share of women MSMEs jumps 37% in total MSMEs registered on government's Udyam portal. Factory output IIP rises to 16 month high of 11.7% in October. Net FDI into India touches 21 month high at 5.9 billion dollars in October. India top investment destination as West looks beyond China. UN report. India hot investment destination for Western corporate giants. UN report. India's merchandise rises Exports may grow to 500 to 510 billion dollars in FY25. FIEO India registers record export at US dollar 778 billion in 2023-2024. Public sector banks total profit jumps 35% crosses rupees 1.4 trillion in FY24. Claims paid to farmers under PMFBI against crop damage crosses rupees 1.59 trillion. Auto sector shows strong start in FY25. Total sales up 25% in April. Export of Apple iPhones from India doubled in fiscal year 2023-24. UPI transactions witness meteoric rise from 92 crore to 8,375 crore in just five years. Whew. 30 headlines that The Guardian missed. Think about that.